Hola, señor, señoritas, niños y niñas, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and buenos dias, Mazatlan. Teddy here, coming to you from the northernmost beach here in the beautiful city of Mazatlan, Mexico. As you can see, we are standing at a fountain that is non-operational, and we're in a roundabout right now. You'll see the green bus coming around. Uh, this is a roundabout at the end of the bus route for the white buses and the green buses. This is Point Cerritos, Punta Cerritos. And today we're going to be taking a walk down uh, part of the beach here at Cerritos. Uh, we will be going out to the point. We will uh, then head down and uh, get out on the sand and show you what it looks like. But again, we're back here at the roundabout. You will see the four-lane uh, highway or road coming in with a big median in the middle. Now, in, in the middle is a really nice bike path, walking path, and that extends for quite some time, so a great place for exercise. But you'll see the cars coming to my left over there. That's where the buses will bring you. The bus will stop, generally, on that side of the roadway. And the bus driver usually takes a little break at that point, but you do have to get off there. So if you came out from Centro, let's say, you were at the Mercado or walking around Plazuela Revolución or Machado or whatever you're doing, and you said, hey, let's go out to Cerritos and see what's happening. Well, you get on the green bus, you give them 13 pesos, and they will take you all the way to this location. Uh, now, when you're ready to leave, you just come over to the other side of the of this four-lane road on my right, uh, and uh, you pick up the bus anywhere along there. Just do the normal, flag them down. But again, 13 pesos gets you back down to Centro. A uh, lot of standing water. That's because we had a, uh, a pretty good-sized Tormento Electrica overnight or thunderstorm overnight, so we've got uh, quite a bit of water. Also, it's a little cloudy, which to me is great because that helps a little bit with the temperatures. It uh, doesn't do a lot for the humidity, but we'll deal with that. Uh, you see that driveway there with the stop sign? That's actually the entrance to an RV slash trailer park uh, that has become uh, a somewhat popular place for some people to live. Uh, some of the folks out there have actually... Uh, sort of built permanent structures around their RV or their, their trailer, and it's become a, a spot where you can actually live. It has security. It's quiet out here, whatever. But we're walking towards the point now, and uh, these are restaurant shops along the way. So if you're out here, you you know, you're not going to go hungry or, you, you know, uh, there's an OXO that we saw right at the beginning of this row of shops. So... Uh, as I said in numerous other uh, episodes, you can't go far without uh, running into an OXO or a kiosco or a pharmacy. Um, I have not seen a pharmacy here yet, uh, but who knows? Maybe as, as some of these other high-rises get built and you start seeing more and more people out here, maybe you'll end up with a pharmacy in this location. Now, there are some just down the road, not far from here, some other little shopping areas, and there are pharmacies down there, so it's not like you can't get to one. But, um, like I said, uh, this is Cerritos. Cerritos is a newer area of Mazatlan. Maybe not the newest, but it is a newer area. Uh, of development here in Mazatlan. Uh, generally, uh, the locals uh, refer to uh, areas that are developed out beyond the marina uh, as Nuevo Mazatlan. So this probably is considered in that. And there's another area called uh, Real del Valle, 
which is on the other side of uh, the Walmart and the Sam's Club, out that direction, uh, that's also uh, considered Nuevo Mazatlan. But there's development going on there. Here at the point, uh, Punta Cerritos, we see there's several restaurants. Here's one that you may recognize, the La Jaiba Pata Salada. Uh, this is uh, their location right here at the point. Uh, they do have their breakfast menu out here. What a great place to come and have breakfast over the water. But they also have a location uh, right along the Malecon in Playa Norte in one of the Palapa areas right on, on the sand. So uh, keep an eye out for that. But they do have a location here, which is uh, very nice. A uh, great place to sit and have your morning coffee or, you know, a little desayuno. Or uh, a great place to come and watch a sunset. Uh, here's the, the beach area at the point, and uh, it's quite rocky, and uh, there's not a whole lot of beach area. We're not even at high tide yet, and you're already seeing it lap up against um, the seawall there at the restaurant. Also, if you saw the young lady, off to the left of her was a drainage area. Uh, we'll probably get a picture of uh, of that. There's a drainage area right there coming in. So I don't like, uh, as you know, I don't like being near any of these drainage areas. Uh, there's a restaurant called Mariscos Rosita. Next to that is El Chino. These are local restaurants uh, serving local seafood and local cuisine. Love that word cuisine. Can't just say food. I digress. Uh, but you've got a couple benches here. You can sit and watch the sunset, or you can go have a margarita at uh, one of the restaurants. Uh, also on the left, there's some uh, local uh, restaurants there, and there's also Urban Beach, which, uh, you know, typical beach garb, uh, water toys, souvenirs, things like that. Um, so you can... Uh, you can have a really nice day at the beach out here. Now, another thing to notice uh, when we get up here, you'll see that this curb is painted white, and on the other side, you see a, a curb painted yellow. The white area, uh, if you drive out here, that's parking. You can park against the white curb, and it's free. You can park all day. Uh, you can't park on the yellow. The yellow is... Uh, they have to have at least one lane of traffic that flows, so uh, you can't park on that yellow. But if it's a white uh, curb, you can park there. And that's, uh, that's really nice. Now, I will say that weekends, holidays, you might want to plan on getting down here early if you want to get a good parking space, you know, close to where you want to be on the beach. But... Uh, you can, you can certainly get down here and uh, park your car. Now, there are access areas all along the roads coming in uh, to this area, too. So there are other places you can find parking. Um, and we'll try to maybe highlight some of those as we go, go later on through the, this video and, and maybe uh, if we do a second one. I'm, I'm thinking we may have to do a second one because... This is a long stretch of beach, too, just like Playa Norte was. This is a, a, long, a long stretch of beach uh, at Cerritos. But we're uh, back down where we started now. There's the trailer park. And we're going to take a right here just off the roundabout and head down to the beach. We are uh, going to be going uh, and making our... Uh, walk down into the sand uh, just next to where that construction is going on down there. Uh, there is a pathway right beside uh, some shops and restaurants that takes you right onto the sand. So we'll be, we'll be headed down that way. And uh, again, you see parking all along here. You'll also see some um, Structures on the right where you'll probably end up on weekends and holidays and what have you with, with vendors, you know, hawking their items, whatever they may be, um, whether it's uh, souvenirs. That's usually what you see out here, souvenirs, um, 
beach toys, things like that. But uh, it is lighted. You can see uh, the light standards and the light poles here, um, just like the Malecon. So it is an area that uh, is uh, pretty safe, pretty safe, although, you know, I'm sure that... Uh, like every place, you know, late at night, this, you know, who knows? Uh, but uh, it is lighted, and uh, that's a good thing. So we're coming uh, closer to uh, another set of little shops right, right down as you get ready to walk onto the sand. And uh, this area, it's an interesting uh, name for a beach. We are coming to a beach that is lovingly called Playa Brujas. Now, in Spanish, the word bruja is witch. Brujas is, is witches. So this is essentially the witch's beach. And uh, legend has it in Mexican folklore, that this beach is where uh, the witches would come to do their rituals. Uh, there's also a, a legend that asserts that uh, back in the pirate days, the pirates would come in and hide their gold or their, the booty that they got from their plundering. They would hide it in some caves back here, and the witches would come and protect it um, by bringing in uh, bats to, you know, ward off any intruders. And off here to the left, you will see on this uh, sort of a reddish, uh, orangish looking building, it says Restaurant Playa Brujas. And it's got a picture of a witch on a broom. There's also the restaurant there that we uh, to the left, called Mr. Leonzo, very popular restaurant here, and this is the Surf in Mazatlan uh, surf shop. If you need to get surf lessons or rent surf gear, boards, what have you, so we're taking that access uh, next to the surf shop, and we're walking right down to the beach. Uh, be careful when you make the walk; it's it's a little bit of an incline, but it but it's pretty easy. It's mostly sand. Uh, but just be careful. There's uh, the restaurant, Mr. Leonzo. Uh, I have read good reviews about it. Obviously a great location right here at Playa Brujas. Uh, you got a sea view. You got the whole thing going on, uh, kind of dining uh, on the beach. Also another little Palaba restaurant off to the right. And uh, now we hit the sand. We hit the sand here at Playa Brujas. Off in the distance, you see one of the three islands that is would be uh, Bird Island or Isla Pajaros. Um, and here we have a couple warning signs. Uh, I'll take you to this one, which basically says, "Don't swim here." You know, this is not suitable for swimming. Uh, and uh, as you might guess, it's basically because of. Uh, the rocks you see out there, you, you know, quite a few rocks. Um, and you see the red flags. Those, those generally will indicate where, where the obstacles are that you need to watch out for. But, but just be aware that that can change because it is the ocean. Uh, but anyway, pay attention to those signs. And uh, by all means, if you have the opportunity, please, especially if you've got young kids, uh, Settle yourself in at a location near a lifeguard stand. That way, if you have questions, concerns, emergencies, whatever, you have some place to get help. Uh, there's that construction we were seeing on the way down. It's a new project. It looks like it's called the Ellipse. It's going to be like 21 stories, uh, 21 floors, I guess, uh, several different types of condos. Uh, we have some... Uh, beach tent set up. I'm, I'm not sure if these are part of the restaurant and that they will serve you down here or if these are just independent uh, little uh, tents and tables set up and maybe 
somebody charges you, you know, 100 pesos to use it for the day or something, I, that I'm not sure of. And there's nobody around to ask, unfortunately. But uh, it could be, you know, uh, the restaurants uh, might serve you down here. I, I'm not sure of that. But uh, we start our walk down the beach. And uh, as you'll see, uh, as we move farther down the beach, uh, quite a nice wide uh, beach area. Uh, the tide right now is about halfway in. It's, we've still got a couple more hours before we get to high tide. And if you just look to my left, you'll see where the, the sand gets, uh, goes from darker to lighter. That appears to be kind of the high tide mark. So even at high tide, you still have some beach up to the left there to, you know, to sit. That'd be hard to walk sometimes up there because of the soft sand. But, you know, you still have pretty good room. There we see a couple of paddle boarders heading out for the morning. Um, hopefully, uh, they look like they know what they're doing. So they probably understand where the rocks are and, and where the uh, dangers are. Um, the water itself is, is pretty glassy today uh, once you get beyond the waves. And uh, Cerritos Beach and this whole area does have some good waves as you're seeing uh, the waves break there. So that's why it is one of the popular surf spots. Um, there's probably I, I, four really popular spots to surf, and this would be one of them out here in Cerritos. You would have Playa Luna Bonito if you're a beginner or intermediate. Then you would have Los Pinos uh, for a, a good point break. Uh, as well as Olas Altas for a point break. Uh, and you'll see uh, surfers out there uh, most of the time, uh, you know, particularly in the morning. It's, it's better in the morning because the waters, uh, you don't get the winds so much. The winds pick up during the day and it chops everything up quite a bit. But there you see how wide the beach is. And you see some construction off just in the distance there at the edge of the beach. Uh, it looks like on the left side, there's like an older home of some sort. And then on the right side, you've got some new construction. You see between the trees there, that looks like an older home. And then on the right here, it looks like it's a new construction that started uh, and is nothing's happening. Um, that's not uncommon here in Mexico. And I asked my friend Alma about that and she said, yeah, a lot of times these developers will, they'll have enough money to get a project planned and started, but they may not have all the funds to complete it. So they go through all the planning and all that stuff and, and get all the permits and then they will uh, start the project, get the thing sort of in the ground get the land cleared, whatever it is that they need to do. And then they will start selling. And as they get more money from the sales, then they will start building. And as long as they have money coming in from the sales, they keep building. That's why some of these projects can take a year or two years to complete because they wait for the money to come in. Um, and, uh, it's different, you know, because in the States, generally, in order to even start a project, you have to have your funding in place. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm not sure how many, uh, how many folks in the States would say, you know what, I will, uh, I'll give you this $200,000 or the deposit, whatever that, maybe it's a $20,000 deposit on the hopes that you will actually get enough money to eventually complete the project. I'm, now, I'm not sure of all the details. I'm just, I'm just telling you what, what I've been told. And it may not, may not be totally like that at all. But um, it's an interesting thing. Off on the left, you see one of the big major resorts out here, the Ryu, R-I-U. Uh, we will be walking past that in just a, a few minutes. Um, and there are several, there are, uh, I'll say several, there are a lot of 
uh, resorts uh, out here on this stretch of beach. It, like I said, it is a new uh, part of Mazatlan, or at least newer. Uh, there are some older buildings that have been out here for a while, but, you know, they were buildings that were built at the time way out of town, you know. Um, now you're sort of, you know, still you're now part of town. But it is a new sec- newer section, and a lot of uh, condos, uh, timeshare resorts, um, and uh, a very popular place for snowbirds and uh, expats who like the idea of having a newer construction with uh, more modern uh, facilities, uh, what have you. And uh, and on a, a decent stretch of beach, it's 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 very uh, very compelling, uh, quite honestly. Um, and you're seeing similar things happen down uh, along like Playa Norte, and uh, in that area particularly, uh, where they're tearing down the old and putting up the new high rises. And uh, there is a sort of mixed emotion about that there's a a an understanding of of many of the old structures are just not practical anymore they just you know they just don't work anymore but uh there's always been this concern that that uh by doing all of these high rises and and as many projects as there are going on is um how will the infrastructure of Mazatlan handle that? Thus far, it's been a struggle, to be honest with you. There are, are uh, a lot of issues with flooding uh, of roadways, with uh, the water supply system and the, the, the uh, you know, fresh water, uh, getting it to places that need it. And, uh, you know, there's the concern that by building all of this additional property, how is that going to affect that infrastructure and how are they going to deal with it? Uh, there are those who, you know, certainly, uh, rightly so, say, well, why, did, why don't you take care of that first and then bring this other stuff in? But oftentimes that you don't, you, you don't have that option because developers get in here and they they want to get their project in and of course you're you know you have to be concerned on on one side about the infrastructure issues but you also are concerned from a financial standpoint of what what the economics of that project does for your city you know they they will be paying taxes they will be paying fees so you know you You have to take the good with the bad, I guess. But anyway, hopefully they will uh, get that figured out. But out in this area, uh, like I said, there's a lot of newer stuff out here and more stuff being built as we go. We're starting to see, as you notice here, a lot more people on the beach down at this area because we're near some of those uh, large resort areas. Uh, You will, just as in any of the beach areas in Mazatlan as you're walking uh, the beach here at Cerritos, you will see the beach vendors walking up and down the beach, um, hawking their goods, whether that's, you know, sunglasses, sombreros, jewelry, souvenirs, uh, water toys. Uh, You will also see people out here trying to uh, sell different tour packages, whether that be whale watching during the season, fishing trips, uh, parasailing, uh, jet ski rental, you know, what ha- all of the stuff that they have here. And, um, you know, just, just understand, and, and this is just of a word of caution, and, and uh, you know, I hope you will understand that these people, they're just trying to make a living like anyone else. They're not there to hassle you. 
uh, for the most part, obviously, sometimes you will get, you know, uh, some that is really insistent on on uh, trying to sell you a product. But normally, all you have to do, uh, if you're not interested in what they have to sell, just politely smile and say, no gracias, no gracias. And uh, they'll generally, you know, move away and and you're fine. Just don't be rude. Uh, don't be ru- don't be rude anywhere. I, rude people. I don't know. Matter of fact, there's a guy. Who looks like he's got a list of uh, different tour type things. Uh, he's trying to offer to those folks. Um. But anyway, don't be rude. Uh, I read a story uh, the other day about. Uh, Somebody was in a, I guess, the Carl's Jr. Uh, and uh, obviously uh, English-speaking people. And they r- wrote a story or a, an article on Facebook about someone who was in line, obviously either American or Canadian, or English-speaking customer who was in front of them and was and got mad at the, the young lady behind the counter who was trying to take her order because the young lady didn't speak English. Well, people, you're in Mexico. Spanish is the language of Mexico. So, so learn how to communicate in Spanish one way or the other. Now, you don't have to be fluent in Spanish to communicate. And you certainly don't have to be rude. And apparently, from what this uh, posting said, this person literally got mad and rude. And, uh, you know, and you wonder where the, the term ugly gringo comes from. But it's that type of attitude. So I just caution everybody, be polite. You know, these people, they're, they're, they're trying to help you. They're trying to serve you. And you need to learn, first of all, to speak a little bit of Spanish. I mean, and, it, and especially in a fast food restaurant, they have pictures of the combos and the article and whatever they sell on the board, and usually they're numbered. So all you got to do is say, hold up a finger. Numero four with Coca-Cola. That takes care of you. You know, just don't be rude. Anyway, we're heading, uh, Pat, we just passed the Ryu, as you saw, and... uh, we're coming up to an area now uh, where um, I'm going to start cutting this off because I'm getting close to that 30-minute mark, and I don't want this to go over 30 minutes. So we'll probably come back and do a sef- second part of this video from this location south towards the marina. But I see right ahead of us here, you can see another one of those drainage areas coming up. So I think I'm going to cut it off right there. Uh, Again, tell you, don't sit near these drainage areas and certainly don't swim by these drainage areas. It's it's toxic. Uh, Anyway, I'm going to cut this off and say thank you guys for watching this episode. You know, we'll hit, hit you back with a second one at some point here in the near future. Uh, Thanks for watching Buenos Dias Mazatlan. Please leave your comments and suggestions uh, or send us an email at buenosdiasmazatlan at gmail.com. And uh, give us a like and subscribe. We'd certainly appreciate it. But uh, for now, I just want to say Buenos Dias Mazatlan signing off. Teddy out.